Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today I'm going to be making a sugar plum fairy. For the base doll I was trying to choose between this Kaomi and this Ari. The Ari has a very beautiful opalescent skin tone but ultimately I decided to go with the Kaomi because I felt like the blues would contrast better with the fabrics that I had in mind. I wanted to use a lot of really light iridescent fabrics. I'm also just a really big fan of the Haunted line in general. I really like the translucent nature of the vinyl they used. I get her prepped by shaving down her hair with my electric razor and then once I've got it down to a nice stubble I plop her down into some boiled water. This is going to allow the vinyl to get nice and squishy so I can easily pull her head off. I make sure to use a cloth to protect my hands because there will be water inside the head and the vinyl is going to be very hot too. We don't want to burn ourselves. I use a flathead screwdriver to scrape all of the hair plugs out of the holes. Once I have it loosened, I can use my needle nose pliers to pull it out through the neck hole. With 100% acetone, I can remove all of the factory paint. The sculpting on this Kaomi is just absolutely gorgeous. I've never worked with one before. She was the only one I have, and I'm definitely going to have to invest in some more. To get her prepped for reroute, I first paint her scalp with a coat of pink acrylic paint. This way, if there is any gaps or thin areas, it won't be as obvious because it'll be pink to match her hair. For her hair, I'm going to be rerouting her with this fluffy pink from the Doll Planet. This is from their fluffy line, and so you don't need as much of it to reroute in Monster High Head. It is very fluffy, so you don't have to fill in all of the holes like you do with a regular nylon hair reroute. I actually still had plenty of this left over after the reroute was done. I wrap the hair around my finger and then slide it onto the reroute tool, and then plunge this down into the pre-existing holes. I first reroute along the front hairline and the part line, and I'm making sure to go in every single one of these holes. Once I get to the other side of the part line, I'm going down into the exact same holes, only I'm pulling the hair in the opposite direction. I then fill in the remainder of the hair, only filling in about every other hole, and then I secure the hair with some liquid fusion glue. I swirl that around with a q-tip, making sure to touch all the plugs. I did want to say thank you so much for all of your comments and likes on the videos throughout the year because it really does help with the YouTube algorithms. I do read every single comment you guys leave me. I just love hearing from you guys and I will always try to reply to you. I've made a pattern for her dress and the first thing I tackle is I sew the darts on the front and the front lining. I trim the excess and then seal the edges with some fray check. I sew the side seams on both the front and the liner. I sew the two pieces together along the sides and top seam, and then I flip this right side out. Next I sew on some jump rings along the center back. These are going to act as hoops to lace up to close up the back. I learned this from watching Pixie Notori. I highly recommend you checking her out. She's a really great doll artist here on YouTube. A big shout out to my patrons. I'm so thankful for you guys. OOAK Magpie, Bex Mini Studios, Camille, Kitsy, Storm Crow Studios, Donna Magana. If you're interested in becoming one of my patrons, please check out the link in the description box below. There's lots of great benefits and exclusive content just for my patrons. In December's Dynamite Tier patrons actually received a pair of 3D printed ram horns and big sister shoes. Once I have all my jump rings sewn in place, I secure my stitching with a little bit of glue. For the bottom portion of her dress, I've made a circle skirt pattern that's a little offset. This way the front will be shorter and the back will be longer. I take my top tool layer and tons of these little bitty petals that I've cut out of this crepe iridescent fabric and I begin pinning and layering things onto the dress. Once I'm happy with their placement, I'm going to stay stitch those down. I sew all four of my skirt pieces to the bodice. I use ribbon to secure the inside seam of the skirts. I take and apply a bit of fabric fusion glue, then I am heat sealing the ribbon in place. This is going to help prevent all of those little petals from coming loose and fraying out of the seam. With the right sides facing, I sew up the back seam on the skirts. The last bit of stitching we need to do is a ladder stitch, and we're just using this so that you don't see any stitching. I 
Of course, this dress is not complete without some rhinestones, so I use my gem tack glue and I'm dotting that on with the tip of a toothpick, and then I'm applying rhinestones all over the dress. When I apply rhinestones to the skirt layers, I am putting my hand in between the layer and the ones below it so that I'm not getting glue and gluing the layers together. For her shoes, I decided to use a pair of my witch shoes, which had been a misprint. I try not to throw these out because I always figure I can use them for a project down the road, and this one turned out to be the perfect one. I felt like she didn't need to have actual heels on, so since the heels were already broken, I just went ahead and clipped them off completely, and with a little bit of sanding, they're ready for painting. I gave them a coat of pink acrylics on the tops, and then I painted the bottoms with a silver. Once the shoes are completely painted, I give them a coat of Mod Podge on the pink areas. I then liberally coat them with glitter. Yeah, after this project, there was glitter everywhere in my house. It was totally worth it though, because these shoes came out so cute. It just looks like little sugar all over her shoes or something. So freaking cute! For her headdress, I'm going to be creating a base out of Warbler first. And I've cut out two pieces. One's going to function as the headband, and one is going to function as a fanning area so that I can have something to glue all of the little candy pieces up against. I'm using my heat gun to heat up the Warbler. This makes it pliable once again, so when I shape it into a shape and it cools down, it'll hold that shape. The heating also activates the glue on the warbler, so when you stick two pieces together, they stay stuck together once they've cooled off. I was really inspired by Miss G designs on Instagram. I'd seen some of her crowns in the past, and when I saw her rendition of the Sugar Plum Fairy, I knew I had to make one of my own, so that's what got this whole process started. I started out with a much taller fan base, but I quickly realized I was going to be just a little bit too tall, so I did cut this down. Once I'm happy with the shape, I prime it with some white paint. I do plan for most of this base to be covered, but if there are any areas poking through, I want it to be very pretty. So I'm painting it in pastel rainbow colors and then coating it in that same glitter that I used on her shoes. To decorate the crown, I did buy a lot of deco charms off of Amazon. However, the pack that I bought didn't have very many really small ones, so I am going to be making a few out of epoxy sculpt. I make some gumdrops and macarons, little swirls of whipped cream with cherries, some sugar cookies, and I even made some scoops of ice cream too, but I wound up not using those. When I was coming up with my concept for the Sugar Plum Fairy, I was thinking more along the lines of what the story itself is. And the Sugar Plum Fairy was the chosen ruler while the prince was away. She's ruling over a land that is described as completely made of sugar. The trees were laden with sweets and a gleaming palace was built out of jelly beans with a shiny white roof made of sugar icing. So when the Sugar Plum Fairy arrives to greet Clara, I am picturing the epitome of candy personified. After all the little sculpted bits have cured for 24 hours, I get them painted and coated in glitter too. Now on to decorating. There was no rhyme or reason to this. I had no plan going in. I just started sticking stuff on and seeing if I like the layout. And here you can see me just holding up different things, seeing how they looked. And this continued throughout the whole creation of the headdress. I really love all the deco charms that I was able to get on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description box below if you wanted to check it out. But all the little suckers and the gummy bears and the little sour candies were adorable. And you can see the fiddling continued all the way up until the very end. I just, I really wanted to make it perfect. And of course, every fairy needs their wings. I've sketched out a wing design here on some paper and I've cut some wire to length. I'm using a thicker gauge wire on the top and then a thinner for the following veins. I shape out each wire and make sure that it lines up with my sketch. Once all of my wires have been shaped, I tape down a piece of Angelina film over top of my sketch. I apply some gem tack glue to the back side of the wire and I very carefully place this down onto the Angelina film. I hold it down for a few seconds to make sure that the glue is adhered really well to the Angelina film. Now 
Now that the wires have been glued down to the bottom layer of Angelina film, I need to get prepared for the top. I need to work quickly because I don't want the earlier stuff dry before I can lay down my film, but I also don't want to make a mess either. Any areas that you spill glue onto the Angelina film will be visible in your final product. Now I firmly press the top layer of Angelina film onto the glued wires. I run my finger down each vein to make sure that there's good contact. I am going to leave this here until it's dry because I don't want to risk shifting it and smearing the glue. Now that the glue is dry, I give my wings a trim, and I'm getting them trimmed very close to the shape that I want because when we sear the ends later with a lighter, if there's too much bulk there that you're trying to shape, it's going to just bubble up and leave a big bulge of plastic. I sandwich my wing between two layers of parchment paper, then I take my flat iron and I quickly run it across the wing. This causes the two layers of Angelina film to fuse to one another, but we don't want to leave it too long because it can melt them completely. I give it its final shaping with my lighter, and I'm just taking the flame and not directly touching the Angelina film with it, but I'm getting it very close to the side, and this is just causing the Angelina film to melt up towards the wire. I have had people ask me how I'm able to get my wings so smooth, and I am not sure, and I think it may just depend on the brand of Angelina film you're working with. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box the brand that I use if you're interested in trying it. I actually did some experimenting trying to make mine crinkle and just never could get those same results. And of course, her wings need some glitter too. So I'm applying a bit of gem tack glue to the very ends of the wings, and then I'm going to dust those with glitter. I really liked this effect because it made me think of frosting on the tips of her wings. Now to get the wings ready for their attachments. I'm taking the wire at the end and using my round nose pliers to form a tapered cone. This is going to allow an area for the magnet to rest. I place the magnet into this area and then I secure it with a bit of super glue. For the corresponding magnets on the back, I take and I've marked two spots on the back of the doll's body. I'm taking my Dremel tool and then I'm carving out two circles for those. I'm making sure to check movement on the doll's arm constantly because I don't want to damage that mechanism. I test the fit on the magnets and I also take the time to mark which side goes in which and which side is facing up. We don't want to glue these in backwards. And finally, I'm ready to glue these magnets in place, and I'm just using a bit of super glue for the initial fit. I try to glue the magnets in. Oh my gosh, just work. Now that the magnets are glued down, I'm going to secure them a little bit more with some epoxy sculpt right around the edges. Just as a side note, I did have to glue these in one at a time and make sure that the super glue was held before I could move on to the next magnet. I use a bit more epoxy sculpt to make a prettier transition between the wings and their magnet attachments as well. I eventually paint these and coat them with some mica powder. Now on to the face up. Here's all of the colors that I use, lots of pinks, blues, and purples, and lots of shimmery mica powder. Perfect for a sugar plum fairy. I've wrapped her hair up in a cloth to protect it, and I've also given her two coats of Mr. Super Clear in preparation for the face up. The Mr. Super Clear gives the vinyl a paper-like texture that allows the watercolor pencils and the pastels to adhere to the surface of the vinyl. I begin by sketching in her eye shape, and I have to say, I'm not normally a fan of these heavily sculpted on features like these sculpted on eyelids, but these are just so beautifully done that I don't mind them at all. They're gorgeous. It did prohibit me from doing eyelashes on the upper eye, but I think it might be an opportunity in the future to use real lashes here, so maybe that's something I do if I can come across another Kaomi. Once I'm happy with the shape of the eye, I start defining the iris and the pupil placement. I begin to build up pastel to show off the natural contours of the face. I build this up several times over the course of the doll, and even on this first layer, I go in with multiple passes so that there is a more natural transition between the colors. If I try to go in directly with the darkest that I want, it's going to have a sharper drop off and look less natural. I'm shading around the eyes and the nose, mouth, and lips. 
And of course, I always give my dolls a little bit of bagging under their eyes. It's something that I have, and I was always self-conscious about it when I was younger, so I add it to all of my dolls. She gets a dusting of purple for her eyeshadow and some light pink on her cheeks. I dust her lips with a bubblegum pink shade of pastel, then I go crazy with the mica powder. I'm going to apply this on every single layer because the MSC really knocks it back so you don't see as much of it in the end result. I'm using shades of pink on the cheeks and then on the rest of the face I'm using this shimmery opalescent color that has a blue shift. And of course I was just so excited to put on the mica powder I forgot that I was not done so I am having to add in the other things to this layer that I still needed to do. I darken up her lip crease and add some lines to the lips. I fill in her scleras with some white watercolor pencil. I block in the color for her irises. I'm using medium purple for the majority of the eye and then doing a light pink on the bottom. Now on a fresh layer of Mr. Super Clear, the first thing I will do is tackle those eyebrows. I dust on some pink pastel and then I take my pencil eraser and begin defining the shape. It always takes me a few tries to get it right, that's why I do it on a fresh layer. I felt like that the eyes didn't have enough contrast to them, so I decided to add in a deeper purple as well. Some more dustings of mica powder, and I'm going to add some highlights to her face. With a black watercolor pencil, I begin darkening up her lash line. This helped the eyes to really pop. I felt like they were starting to get a little lost in the face up, and doing this made them a lot more striking. The final thing I tackle on layer two is some shading into the scleras and the tops of the eyes. This is going to give the eye a little bit rounder appearance. On layer 3, I take my pink watercolor pencil, and this is just a shade that's slightly darker than the shading of the pastel, and I begin adding in individual hairs to her eyebrows. I'm adding in some visual interest to the eyes using a pink, a white, and a dark purple watercolor pencil. I darken her iris and then I add in some purple mica powder to her eyeshadow. Using a super sharp black watercolor pencil, I begin adding in her lower lashes. I'm just doing quick light flicks to get those wispy lashes. I find the best way to get a really sharp point on my pencils is to first sharpen it with a pencil sharpener and then rub it across a piece of sanding paper. This gets it to a nice fine point. Once I have my lashes drawn, I go back with my black Derwent Ink Tense pencil and I'm going to do a pass right around the base of the eyelashes. This is just going to give it a nice full thick look. I do one more pass of mica powder before sealing for the final layer. On layer 4, I'm adding in all of the highlights to her waterline and her catch lights. And with that, her face up's done! Now on to her body blushing. I'm using the same shades that I use on her face, shades of blues and purples to shade in any area that's going to be naturally in shadow, like around her collarbone and in her belly button. And I'm using a light pinks on the round of her belly and the tops of her breast. I'm so sorry my video isn't released on Friday like it normally is. Uh, she actually wasn't intended to be ready for Christmas. I kind of fell behind schedule. She actually wasn't going to be out until after the first of the year because I had holiday plans to travel back home. So you get her before the end of the year because we decided not to travel. For the wing attachment area on her back, I've painted the epoxy sculpt areas with a light blue and then I'm coating them with some Mod Podge and dusting them with glitter. I'm making sure not to cover up the magnet area because I don't want to affect those connections. Mm -hmm. 
Now for some hair styling. I've stuck her onto my styling stand and I'm taking out small sections and I am wrapping these around in my foam curlers. I'm using a couple of different sizes so that I have some variety in her curls. Once I have all of the hair set in her curlers, I'm going to put her in this bucket and I'm going to be pouring some cold water on her. This hair in particular says no heat whatsoever, so I can't boil wash this. I'm just going to be covering it in cold water and then leaving it to dry overnight. Now that her hair is fully dried, I begin removing the curlers. This hair curled a lot better than I was expecting to, especially considering there was no hot water to set it. With them removed, I'm going to give these curls a fluff and I just pop her off the stand and whip her hair around like crazy. This is just separating out a few of the strands and I want it nice and fluffy. I separate some of the curls out by hand, just making sure I get a nice full effect. Finally, the last thing to do is get her dressed and assembled. At the time this video goes live, she will be available for purchase on my Etsy store, so check out the link in the description box below if you're interested. I'm super happy with how she turned out. I think my favorite part about her is her little headdress. I just love all the little candy on it. It just says Sugar Plum Fairy to me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those bell notifications so you never miss a post. Remember, always be creating!